غرباء وال غير الله لا نحن الجبال غرباء والتضيناها شعارا في الحياة غرباء على اله وصحبه ومن والاه من تبعهم الى يوم الدين. اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters the topic is the glad tidings and glad news for the strangers. And this topic there are four elements. First of all, the struggle between truth and falsehood, early strangers, glad news for the strangers, and how to remain steadfast in the deed. Inshallah we'll try to uh, shed light in these four points. The struggle between truth and falsehood will carry on. It started the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the cursed one, Iblis, to prostrate <coughs> along with the angels before Adam. That's the beginning. And this enmity and this struggle will carry on till Allah brings this world to an end. So this is a fact we should understand. So this struggle between haq and battle, truth and falsehood will be there. <clears throat> People who deviated from the right path, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for, will not spare no efforts in spreading corruption, mischief, in his kingdom and on the planet. But Allah will not let them do all these things just like that. Allah puts an end to it. Because there will be a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the victory and success the upper hand for the truth and the following of the truth. The battle, falsehood, has no roots. As Allah said, وَنَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَزْحَقُهُ فَإِذَهُ فَيَزْحَقُهُ فَإِذَهُ And we cast and throw the truth upon falsehood, it crushes the falsehood. And there is a day when all of us will stand before the King, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all those who were spreading corruption and mischief in the last kingdom, on that day they will regret that day. They will regret. And the believers and the oppressed will rejoice on that day. Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُوا Today, the believers are laughing at the disbelievers in the Jannah. Yes. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْبُرُونَ Sitting on cushions, <coughs> facing each other in their palaces in the Jannah. And they are looking at the disbelievers, the oppressors, the tyrants suffering in Jahannam. So that's the day the believers will rejoice, will feel happy. That day is coming. We believe in it. The nation tells us that you are in the Jannah, your palace, you open the window and see those who were mistreating you, those who were oppressing you, you see them in Jahannam in front of you. When not the unbelievers have been paid back for what they did, yes, so that day is coming. Early strangers, the early strangers. The early strangers were the prophets themselves. The Anbiya, the Rusul. They were strangers among their people. 
The people did not receive them. The people opposed their da'wah, gave them tough time. So this is the path, my dear brothers and sisters. The way to the Jannah not, not easy. The way to the Jannah is not easy. But it's the only way. The way of the prophets, the way of the messengers. A lot of troubles, a lot of obstacles. If you think that the way to the Jannah would be easy, you are dreaming. You are cheating yourself. The way to the Jannah not easy. Jannah has been surrounded with hardships, difficulties. And the hellfire is easy. You want to Jannah? Very easy. Don't care. Do whatever you want. Follow your hawa. Follow your nafs. Follow your desires. You go to Jannah. And the Jannah now. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, this dunya, this world is a prison for the believer. Prison, jail. And it is paradise in this way. Because the prisoner in the jail, is he free? No. Between four walls, he can move. So the believer in the dunya, like that. Look right, haram. Left, haram. Everywhere, is haram around you. So you have to control yourself and resist all these temptations. So the early strangers were the prophets themselves. You know in the hadith of Heracles, Herakl, when he asked the Bukhari and he asked the Musafian, tell me, who are the followers of this man? The Prophet. ﷺ. The elite or the downtrodden? The oppressed, the low class. Who are his followers? He said, no. The slaves. The oppressed. He said, that is the case, always. The followers of the prophets are the, the poor fellows. The elite, they don't follow the, the prophets. Because the prophets, they call for justice. For fairness. Elite, they don't like that. The first ones who will oppose the message of the messenger, al mala al mala the elite. That was the grand sense. Then Herakal again asked, those who followed him, did any one of them go back on his heel? <coughs> did anyone leave Islam? He said, no. No one of them. He said, that is the case with the followers of prophets. When the Iman touched the heart, that's it. You don't care about anything. You don't care about anything. You are ready to sacrifice. And we are going to see some of these good examples which will uplift our Iman, inshallah. Those early strangers. Imam Ibn Qayyim says, Oh, you fool. Don't think the way to the Jannah is easy. In this way, Noah cried. Prophet Noah cried in this way. In this way, the way of the Da'wah, Prophet Zechariah was cut into two halves. In this way, John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam, was beheaded. This is the way. The way to the Jannah. Don't think that you will enter the Jannah while you are leading such complacent life, easy life. No way. I'm scaring you, right? No, I have to tell you the truth. This is the reality. 
The way to the Jannah is that way. <coughs> so in this way, Prophet Zechariah, Zechariah alayhi salam, can you imagine this? They put the hawk's horn in the middle of his head and cut him into two halves. Yahya alayhi salam, beheaded. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was strangled, choked. And we better than his prophets? No way. We are the followers of his prophets. So that's the way. That's the way. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, oh prophet of Allah, I love you. He said, get yourself ready for tests. <coughs> Prepare yourself for the ittira. Prepare yourself for tribulations, for calamities. This is the way. And what, that what happened to the messengers of Allah. <laughs> See the early strangers, the family of Yasser, the family of Ammar, his father, and his mother were the first martyrs in the Islam. The mushriks were torturing them, punishing them. The Prophet would pass by them. And the only thing he could say, Sabran Al Yasir, Fa inna mawaitukum al jannah. O family of Yasir, be patient. Your place is the Jannah. There I will meet you. Here I'm helpless. I can't do anything for you. But there we'll meet, inshallah, in the Jannah. Imagine slaves. But the Iman settled in their hearts. Their hearts were filled with the Iman. So they were ready to give their life. Sumaya was stabbed with the spear. And her master is watching. He's the one who killed her. And when she was breathing her last, he spat on his face. She said, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, makes wonders. Once the heart is full of Iman, that's it. Bilal, they were dragging him in the hot sand with metal armor around his body in the hot sand in Mecca. And he would only say, Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. These are the early strangers. Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. And he said, By Allah, I used to mix the sweet of the Ahadun Ahad, sweetness of it. That sweetness overcame all the pain. He was not feeling the pain. He was only enjoying the delightfulness and the sweetness of this Ahadun Ahad. The Prophet ﷺ tells us also about the early Muslims, the early Christians. The disciples of Isa alayhi salam. They are Muslims. How are you? What happened to them? Listen to this. The Prophet ﷺ says, Among those people before you, Muslims, because the, what, why did he say this? The Sahaba came and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, don't you see what we are going through? So he told them, You haven't seen anything. Hmm? There are many things in the stall ahead. And I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters, you haven't seen anything. <coughs> Not yet. Things will get tougher and tougher. This is the way. So listen to this. Among those people before you, a man will be seized and held in a pit dunk for him in the ground. There's a hole, and they put him in this hole so he can run, not can run, cannot run away. And he would be 
sewn with the hook saw, with the saw, into two halves, alive, from his head and his flesh, torn away from his bones with an iron comb. Imagine someone is removing your flesh with an iron comb. But in spite of this, he would not wean away from his faith. He will not leave his deen <coughs> because he knows a few seconds and he will be where? For those. Fatima and Taqad, do whatever you want. Seconds will be there. The Prophet ﷺ was describing the battle of Tabuk. Mota. And he said, Ya'far ibn Abi Talib is holding the flag. They cut his right hand, describing. He was seeing the, 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 the battle field. He took it with his left hand. They cut his left hand. He took the flag with the remaining part of his hands. Now he's killed. Then he said, and now I'm seeing Jaffa flying in the Jannah with the angels. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Immediately, I'm seeing Jaffa now. Flying in the Jannah with the angels. Allah has given him two wings instead of his two hands. Take another one from among the strangers. Suhail so, Rumi. SubhanAllah. The Sahaba, they were sitting in the masjid of the Prophet in the Medina, one, one of the gatherings. And then they were mentioning what happened to them during the days of Makkah. And then he showed them, he removed his garment. He said, have a look. All his, the skin on his back is white. Say, what? Do you have skin disease? He said, no. I'll tell you what. In Makkah, they placed me on glowing embers. The embers. Glowing hot charcoal. They placed me like that on top of it. And nothing extinguished the fire except the fat. That would happen. Take another stranger, Zunira radiallahu anha. It's a woman. They were torturing her till she lost her sight. And they locked her in a room, no food, no drink. <coughs> but who was feeding her? Allah. Medical. Bucket of water would come down from the Jannah. And she would drink. Then this packet will go up. And when Abu Bakr set her free, because Abu Bakr he set Pilar free and also Zanir and others. The Mushriks they say, You lost your sight because of the curse of our idols. He said, Oh Allah, restore my sight. Bring me, give me back my sight. And she got it. Take another example of the early strangers, Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi, who was captured by the enemies, prisoner of war, along with some of the Sahaba. And the head of the Romans started to humiliate him. And then he started to bargain with him, leave Islam. And I will get you married to my daughter. And I'm going to give you half of my kingdom. I said, no way. A Muslim will not compromise his deen. The whole dunya is nothing. True or not? The whole dunya, my dear brothers and sisters, in the sight of Allah, is not equal to the weight of the mosquito. 
when the whole dunya so then the king or this commander he commanded the his soldiers to start executing the sahaba and the way he chose is to drop them into pots the pots were full of oil boil of oil so much so that they cannot get close to the pot so they tie the sahaba with chains and lower them the moment the body is immersed into the oil immediately the bones float and he told them make him the last one let him see how his sahaba are dying his friends in front of him and when he saw that he cried so they said he cried tears we can see tears he said bring them back maybe now he will change his mind he said have you made up your mind no so why did you shed tears he said because i remember they have only one soul the moment i am dipped it's off i wish i had 100 souls so that i will die 100 times fi sabeel allah so the man said those guys are something else different people He told him, you know, I have another option for you, another offer. Kiss me on my forehead and I'll let you go. He thought about it and he said, okay, not only me and all of us. He said, okay, all of you. And he did. And they were released. The moment they arrived in Medina, Umar ibn Khattab received them. And he said, O oh, people of Medina, a head like the head of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa and a forehead like Abdullah ibn Hudhafa deserves to be kissed. And then the one, first one is going to kiss his forehead. Follow me. And all the Sahaba started following him. So this is what happened to the early Muslims, the early strangers, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, glad news. The good news for the strangers. Listen to what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He said Islam began as a stranger, stranger religion. And would return to being a stranger. So Tuba, Tuba is a tree in the Jannah or the Jannah. It's for the strangers. And if you have a tree in the Jannah, what does it mean? You are in the in the Jannah. <laughs> They asked, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, who are the strangers? Who are the Uraba?" He replied, "Those who rectify themselves and others. Those who lead a pious, righteous life. When people are corrupt, they are leading a moral life. When people around them are what corrupt." people are immoral and they are holding and abiding themselves by the sharia by the teachings of islam in another hadith is also describing who are the strangers so there are many descriptions for the strangers he said when they asked him he said those that correct the people when they become corrupt those who enjoy what is right and forbid what is evil They are the strangers. They command the people. They tell the people, "This is right and this is wrong," and they don't fear anyone except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Also, he said, "Those that correct my Sunnah, which has been corrupted by the people after me, those who call the people to the Sunnah and defend the Sunnah." and fight the bid'ah and innovations in the deen 
they are the strangers. So you can see that different descriptions for the strangers. And also he said, وسلم, they are a small group. The minorities are what? They are minority. Strangers are a small group. In another hadith, Nuzza min al qabail One in this country, one in that country. SubhanAllah. A brother, he told me, he went to one place in Africa. He said, in that city or that province, or there was only one sister wearing niqab. Only one sister. And the children are scared. Ninja, ninja, you know ninja. One sister. A stranger. In the whole town, in the whole city. So the strangers are very few, my dear brothers and sisters. So be together. Don't let the shaitan come between you. Help one another. Strengthen one another. You are strangers. Love one another for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are a small group of people among large evil population. Everyone is pointing fingers. See those guys? And you know the list and the names they have. And the labels they have. Evil population, those who oppose them are more than those who follow them. Those who criticize them, those who are to talk evil about them, they are more than those who listen to them. This is another description for the strangers. Then he says, Sallallahu in another hadith in Bukhari Muslim. He said, they will not cease to be a group of my ummah, obedient to Allah's order. That group will remain. They will not be harmed by those who desert them. Yes, you will be deserted. So don't get frightened or scared. Maybe you will not find anyone around you. No one. You are alone. Carry on walking. You are on the straight path. Don't worry about anything else. As Ibn Mas'ud said, Say, you are the jama'ah, even if you are by yourself. No one around you, yes. Subhanallah, the Prophet Sallallahu on the night of the ascension, Mi'raj, he saw a prophet by himself. Allah sent him, no one followed him. No one. And he will come by himself. So if you find no one around you, people deserted you, don't worry. It will happen. This is the way. Just carry on. Don't you know the famous statement of the ulama? Inna Allah nasara hadha deen bi Abi Bakr yawm al-ridda wa bi Ahmad yawm al-fitna. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended this deen by two men. Abu Bakr, during the days of apostasy, when the people, the many of the tribes left Islam and they refused to give the zakah, right? Abu Bakr stood firmly and he fought all of them and he forced all of them to pay the zakah. Or the tribes, he brought them back to the deen. And the other man, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, during the fitna of the Mu'tazila, when they say, this Qur'an is not the word of Allah. And Ahmad al-Hamdul remained steadfast. Many of the scholars at his time, they left him. Many of the scholars, they said and they agreed to what the Mu'tazir are saying by their lips only, of course. Not by their heart. But Imam Ahmad refused. And they took him to the jail. And he went through a lot of things. They would beat him until he would faint. This is Ahmad ibn Hanbal. <coughs> and you know what? When they were taking him to the jail, he, he said, there was only one thing going into my mind. How will I 
and you with the pain of the whip. Because I've never been whipped before. So what feeling? The moment he enters the prison, <coughs> you know normally in prisons there are gangs, you know this? There was uh, someone would be like it had <laughs> uh, government inside. So the head of the prisoners, when Imam Ahmad stepped into the jail and the light was shining, subhanAllah, oh, this is not the face of a criminal, <laughs> right? A criminal is in cut here and cut here, one eye is, that's the criminal. So this guy is not a criminal for sure. So the reason he, they are bringing him here, that means he is straightforward. They want him to say something and he refused. So he came to Imam Ahmad. Imam Ahmad is thinking about what? The whip. And the, this man said, he said, Sheikh, be firm. Don't worry about the whip. It's the first one. Then after that, you don't feel anything. After that, you don't feel anything. You know what Imam Ahmad said? Faqawwa qalbi. He strengthened my heart by that statement. He strengthened my heart by that state. <coughs> also, among the good news of my dear brothers and sisters, that this deen, the deen of Islam, you know the deen of Islam like what? Like the spring. The more you press it, the higher it goes up. Like a ball. Bounce it. What will happen? Go up. You press the Islam or press the Muslims, see what will happen. They go back to the deal. That's why they say, what can we do for you guys? Because huh? this is the secret. This is Allah's deen. This is the deen of Allah. Subhanallah. The negative image we have, the Islam has in the media. You can't doubt it. There's a negative image, right? And yet people are becoming Muslims. Why? Everyone says Islam is horrible, terrorist, all these things. And yet people are becoming Muslims. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people are becoming Muslims. Because people, they go, okay, let us have a look at Islam. What is this Islam? You are indirectly making doubt. You understand? SubhanAllah. When one of them is saying Islam is beautiful, he didn't mean it. Islam is a good religion. Really? Why didn't you tell us a long time ago? <laughs> and people start to read about Islam. Thousands of people are becoming Muslims. So listen to this beautiful hadith. And when you read this hadith, they strengthen your iman. They strengthen it. Listen to this. When the Prophet said, لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض بيت مدر ولا وبر إلا أدخله الله كلمة الإسلام no single house, whether it is built out of bricks, like the houses we have, or wool tents, nomadic tribes, on the face of the globe, except that Allah will bring Islam into it. No single house. Islam will reach every house. This is something Allah decreed. And what Allah decreed is going to pass. You cannot stop it. So this is the good news. That's why a Muslim should be always an optimist. The other hand finally for this deed. This deed will supersede everything as Allah promised. It is Allah who sent his messenger. Bil Huda wa deen al haq Allah sent his messenger with the huda, the guidance, and the religion of truth. So this deen will prevail over any other belief. So these are good news.
for the believers. <coughs> in another hadith, and this is hadith, the briefest hadith in Muslim Ahmad, it's authentic. In another hadith, the Prophet said, Verily, Allah showed me the expanses of the earth, east and west. It's east and west. And he informed me that my ummah would spread over and possess all that I saw of the earth. Alhamdulillah. So the future for Islam, no doubt about that. Whether we are going to see it during our life or not, that's up to Allah. But we should strive and work hard to remain on this deed and remain and hold the robe of Allah. You should not let the robe. Hold the robe, that's it. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you steadfast. Because there are many people, there are many forces pushing, pulling you here or there. No, stick to it. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you steadfast. So strangers, my dear brothers and sisters, everywhere. Muslims are strangers among mankind. Everyone is labeling you extremist, fundamentalist, Islamist. Okay? Muslims are strangers, the true believers, among their own brothers, among the Muslims. You know, he is hardcore. So who's the soft core? Huh? If someone is abiding by what Allah said and what the Prophet is hardcore. The scholars are strangers among the people. The followers also of the Sunnah, they are also strangers. A person who is a stranger in his house. In your own house, you want to lead an Islamic life. Your wife is the first one to stand on your face. Tells you, why you want to change our life? What happened to you? Who brainwashed you, man? <laughs> Those guys you are mingling with? What happened to you? You were a nice guy before. Hmm? Your wife is telling you to tell you that all the people, they are like this. Why do you want to be different? Look around you. See our neighbor, he's a nice guy. See his wife, he's a normal woman. They're beautiful, charming. Why do you want us to be different from these people? My dear wife, this is haram. Oh, come on, that's too much. You know, Islam is easy. <laughs> She will tell you, I'm not living in our time. You are living in bronze age. Somewhere. You're not living in your time. Children, they say, Daddy, things have changed, Daddy. Okay, right? See? Let us be like the kids. My dear children, I'm responsible. I love you. I don't want you to go to hell. So if I don't take care of you and protect you from all this corruption, I will be in Jahannam. I want to protect you, my dear children. Because that's what Allah commands me. Ya yuhaladheena amanu, oh you who believe, qu anfusakum wa alikum nara. Save yourself and save your families from a blazing fire. It's fuel. <laughs> Whose fuel this blazing fire, men and rocks. Do you want to see your child in Jahannam? Do you want to see your sweetheart in Jahannam? So you are a stranger in your own home, in your own house.
a young boy start practicing Islam. His mother comes to say, My dear son, what happened to you? Nothing, mom. Where did he come from? From the masjid. Masjid? This boy was messing around, roaming around with old girls. Huh? Okay, every time phone is ringing. And your mother is happy with that. And she will give you the phone. <laughs> He's on the, the line. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You remind me of your father. <laughs> huh? Huh? Like father, like son, you know? You are a man. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Now, the, this boy, he left all that rubbish. And he's turning to Allah and going to the masjid. And he's always in uh, every after the salah immediately he comes. The, the family are not happy with that. See, what happened to our son? To our child? The same thing. The girl started wearing the hijab. You are still young. Subhanallah. See how strange Islam is in the life of Muslims. That's why the reward for the strangers, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is equal to the reward of 50 Sahabi. Listen to this hadith. SubhanAllah. He said, for indeed, after you, he's the Prophet ﷺ talking to the Sahaba. He said, for indeed, after you, there will be days of patience, days of sorrow, where patience will be like holding on to glowing embers. Yamr, you can get in your hand. Whoever is able to do this will have the reward of 50 people. They said, O oh Messenger, the Sahaba, O oh Messenger of Allah, the reward of 50 of them? He said, no. He replied, the reward of 50 of you. This is a glad news. Glad news. And this hadith is in Tirmidhi, authenticated by Sheikh Al-Bani. And he explained why 50 of you. He said, because you find people to support you. They will not find anyone to help them. They are by themselves. Strangers. So that's why the reward is so great. <coughs> now, how to remain on this deen, inshallah? How to remain on the on the straight path? How to remain steadfast and just going to mention quickly few tips, inshallah. The things that will help us. The first one is the suburb, my dear brothers and sisters. Patience. That's what we need. And patience is not easy. You need to train yourself. Because I was found to say, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Usbiru wasabiru. Oh, you believe? Usbiru, be patient. Wasabiru, and defeat your enemies' impatience. That means your patience should be more than the patience of your enemies. There is a famous hero among in the history of the Arabs before Islam. His name is Antar bin Shaddad. Okay. So one day a man asked him, tell me what is the secret behind your strength? He said, you want to know? He said, yes. He said, give me your finger and I'll give you mine. And you bite my finger and I'll bite yours. And they started biting the fingers of each other. And then the man said, Ay! <laughs> He said, that's it. That's how I defeat the men, by suffering. 
Had you waited a little bit, I would have cried. <laughs> it's a matter of sabr. So we need to have sabr. We need to have sabr. Second thing, taqwa, the fear of Allah. You have to think always of the second life. When your nafs tells you, do this, as Imam Ibn Qayyim said, the shaitan has two ways to reach your heart. One way, through the desires, lusts, <coughs> shahawat. The other way, through the doubts, shubuhat. So if you close these two doors, alhamdulillah. So how can you resist the desires and lusts by the taqwa? The fear of Allah. <coughs> How can you resist the doubts and remove them? By what? <coughs> Ilm, the knowledge, by learning the deed. So you should have both the taqwa and the ilm to combat the shaitan. Third, testing is part of the qadr. That we will be tested inevitably. One plus one equal two. This is the way. Fourthly, we have to leave sinning, the dhunu, the ma'asi, leave the haram, stop sinning, repent, turn to Allah, ask Allah forgiveness, maghfira. Number fifth, five, cling to Allah's robe. Subhanallah. When a Muslim is in facing difficulties, what should he do? And someone is telling him, come to me. I will take care of everything. I will protect you. Come, I'll protect you. No, I will not come to you. Allah is saying, turn to me. I will protect you. We are running away from Allah. SubhanAllah. Run to Allah. Allah will protect you. Allah promised. Allah defends the believers. Turn to Allah. He will protect you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the dua. We should cry to Allah. Get up at night. Shed the tears. Shed the tears before Allah Azza wa Jal. Oh Allah protect us. Oh Allah protect our brothers. Oh Allah protect our families. Cry to Allah. In one of the, the battles, before they started the battle, the commander asked for one of the Salaf, said, where is he? Bring him, one a pious person. They found him at the end of the army, sitting, crying to Allah, and raising his index finger. He said, the commander wants you. He said, what were you doing? Say it was clearing the way for the victory. It was paving the way with the victory, insha'Allah. I was communicating, talking to him, Azza wa Jal, the dua. Number seven, righteous company. Be surrounded with righteous brothers who will strengthen each, each other, remind you. Because it's natural, we feel weak, right? So I need someone to get. Come, come, okay, let's go. We are almost there, huh? We are almost there. Let's, let's go. So that's how the brotherhood, righteous company, the repentance, the tawbah. Also, to know that this life is short, transient. The da'wah. So all these are tips. If you are doing these things, your Iman, first of all, will be strong, inshallah. And then that means you will carry on pulling along the way. Da'wah. So you should get involved in the da'wah. Also, study the stories of the prophets. Read the stories of the prophets, what happened to them. 
Also, the deacon, always. Keep your tongue busy with the deacon. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Al-Azim. Keep this tongue busy. The dhikr gives life to the heart. And brings life to the heart and gives you this inner peace. Inner peace in your heart. And you know, my dear brothers, when the heart is clung to Allah, attached to the Allah, it will be calm. And if the heart is calm, the rest of the organs are calm. The moment the heart starts to weaver, to tremble, the rest start to follow. Two months. Two months. Your heart beats. <laughs> then you start running away. But if the heart is calm, nothing. Oh, because he's the king of the organs, the heart. He's in control. So the thicker will cool his heart. See the Prophet, he entered the haram. His daughter Fatima ran to him and said, My father, I heard them, they are saying, the moment you enter the haram, all of them, they will get up and beat you. He said, My daughter, don't worry. Give me the water for wudu. He did the wudu. And he went to the circle, the mushrooms. None of them could stand up. And he stood over them. Said, Shahat al What a horrible faces. Evil faces. The heart that is attached. Abu Bakr said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, if one of them looks beneath him, he will see us. Abu Bakr, don't worry. Allah with us. That has them. Don't grieve. They, 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 just if someone looks down. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you call the Sahib, he said, Inna Allah ma'na. Oh, Abu Bakr, don't worry. Allah is with us. Allah is with us. So he will protect us. So this when the iman is full of, the heart is full of iman. Calm. And last point is to follow the correct path. The correct way. What's the correct way? Follow Muhammad That's it. Follow him, step by step. What he did, we follow him. Things he didn't, we leave. That's it, that's it. Let's walk behind the Prophet One of our mashayikh, he said, if you want to enter the Jannah before the Prophet, you will never enter the Jannah. Do you think that you will be the first one to enter the Jannah before him? He's the first one. No one will enter the Jannah before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one. The gatekeeper, the angel, has instructions. The first one should enter only Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone has to come after him. They know that. So you cannot enter the Jannah before him. And you cannot enter the Jannah with him simultaneously. You want to enter the Jannah? Walk behind the Prophet Listen to this ayah and that I conclude. May Allah keep us steadfast in the deen. May Allah protect you. May Allah bless you. Allah says in Surah Anisa, that is Surah number 4, ayah 115. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِذُ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا And whoever contends and opposes the messenger, he resists the messenger of the Prophet contends with the messenger. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِذُ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى after guidance has come to him. After the guidance has been explained thoroughly and clearly, clearly to him. And he follows a path different from that of the Mu'mineen. The Mu'mineen. We shall leave him in the path that he has chosen. He chose that way. Such a choice, no problem. 
وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ صَحْتِ مَصِيرًا And we will make him taste the torture of Jahannam. The pain. The painful torture in the hellfire. What an evil destination. What an evil place. What an evil abode. I'm now asking you, my dear brothers, when this ayah 1400 years ago came down and the Prophet read it, who are the Mu'mineen? Who are they? The companions. The Sahara. So Allah is telling us, and whoever contends with the messenger, I said the guidance has come to him, and follow a way other than the way of the Mu'mineen, the Sahaba, the companions. We shall leave him in the way that he has chosen, and will make him taste the chastisement of hellfire. What an evil destination. So if you want the Jannah, follow the Prophet Sallallahu and follow his companions. And understand this deen as Abu Bakr understood it, as Umar and Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair and those who followed the footsteps. Because you cannot understand the deen better than the companions themselves. Can you? No way. The Sahaba Allah said about them, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Is Allah pleased with you? So those whom Allah is pleased with, follow them. Allah said also about the Sahaba, وَكُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَى And all of them Allah promised them the Husna, which is the Jannah, all the Sahaba. That's why Imam Ibn Hazm Allah said, by Allah, all the companions are in the Jannah. Because Allah had promised them the Husna. So, follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, and inshallah, we will be with them. May Allah gather us all in the company of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. May Allah unite our hearts with the truth, and may Allah save us from going astray. Amin. And may Allah bless you, and may Allah protect you, and preserve you, and your families from all types of tribulations and tests. Amin. And may Allah keep us a stage fast in the stage path and may Allah reward all of you for your patience and attendance. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakum Allah khayyah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah now we take uh, about 15 minutes of uh, Q&A. Our brothers can be uh, off the floor and sisters on paper. Uh, first question is a sister became a Muslim recently her parents are non-Muslim and they own a business which sells haram and this sister is working for her parents because this business is their only income they have for their living uh, since she is Muslim can she carry on working uh, for her parents because she has no other income no more details <coughs> the answer that if she is sure that this business, that same voice is Hamar, which is Haram, they're selling liquors. So she cannot help them. She has to make it sure to tell them sorry. You need to look for somebody else. I cannot do it because this is, it goes against my faith, it goes against my Iman. It would be difficult for her. Okay? But this is the truth. They are selling haram. She cannot help them to do that because Allah says, You help one another regarding birr and taqwa, good deeds, righteousness. And don't help one another regarding transgression and, you know, dhulm, injustice. Uh, any brothers, any short questions? Otherwise, uh, and uh, also the sister. I, my advice for the sister is to give dawah to her family. Huh? So, inshallah, they become Muslim and say, "Okay, we we'll leave the haram altogether." Inshallah, may Allah strengthen your iman and may Allah keep you strong. Inshallah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Another question from the sisters. Many Muslims find difficulty in uniting. What is the issue of Hazir and Nazir? And uh, Rasulullah Islam is present or not with us. Can you clarify this issue? Well, you see, this is also another mm, misconception that they, some Muslims, they are saying that 
the Prophet is uh, is with us and he attends our gatherings, you know. And Subhanallah, they will get together and uh, and they will be, you know, chanting, you know that. Uh, you know what I mean. And then all of a sudden they will get up. Say, what happened? Say, he came. Who? The Prophet. Where is he? He's there. Don't you see him? Some, they put a chair for him to sit. SubhanAllah. So they are saying that the Prophet ﷺ comes and he himself alive? Yes. SubhanAllah. If the Prophet ﷺ comes to your gathering, why didn't he come to stop the bloodshed between the Sahaba? Which is more important? Why didn't he come and stop Ali and Muawiyah from fighting each other? Why didn't he come and save the life of Uthman and tell the people, leave Uthman? Why didn't he come and stop Aisha from going to Iraq? Are you following? So those people actually, they are, subhanAllah, they are misled by the shaitan. And what they see is the shaitan, not the Prophet Sallallahu definitely. The Prophet Sallallahu he cannot come out of his grave. And then you can tell them something else. And he told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Do not, La kama Nasara ibn Maria. Do not overpraise me. Do not exaggerate in praising me. Like the Christians did with Isa. Innama ana abd. Say, he's Allah's servant and Allah's messenger. Plus, the Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith, Inna Allah khalaq al-jan min marijin min naar, wa khalaq al-malaikata min nur, wa khalaq adam min ma wasaf al Verily, Allah created the jinn from the flame, and the malaika from nur, light, and Adam from what he told you. What is it? The earth. And the Prophet is one of the children of Adam. So only the angels Allah created them out of light. So this is the issue of Hadr Nadr. The Prophet is everywhere. So this has nothing to do with the teachings of Islam. This is Audhu Billah. Dalal, misguidance. May Allah guide all those who are saying so. So please, what would you say with regards to Nasheed? A question here about Nasheeds. The Nasheeds today, there's no difference between them and the rest of the songs. What we have, what we see. Music, like music. But the only thing that they are, say there are no musical instruments. And sometimes there is a musical, musical instrument. But the impact and the effect when you listen to this Nasheed, it will take you straight to the Jahiliyyah. True or not? It triggers, you see. So you saw that in, in these gatherings. The sisters said, Oh! <laughs> so what happened, girls? You're a Muslim, huh? You are, you know, exciting. Shaitan, you're moving the hijab like in the uh, football fan. This is what is happening. And then you tell me it is halal. What will make it halal? Then the sheets that the scholars said, what? When the Prophet ﷺ, they were chanting, beautiful. Tallahi lawlallahi mahtadayna wa la tasaddaqna wa la sallayna. Had it not because of the mercy of Allah, we would not have been guided, we would not have been prayed. Beautiful things. Not like the Nishis today. Some of the Nishis, like if you are in the discotheque, you know this? <laughs> Come on, guys. This is halal. <laughs> so, that's one thing. The other thing, what also, if you become an addict to all these things, you, can't, you will not like reading the Quran. I challenged anyone who was an addict to this. The moment he puts the Quran on, too much. 
So don't listen to that. We don't recommend it. It's not good for you. It's not good for your Iman. It will not bring you closer to Allah. Music is allowed. Music is haram. If there is music. But even today, without the music, the effect is the same like the songs. For instance, there's a nice poem by Imam Shafi'i. In the Arab world, what they have? One singer came singing it. And the women, they dance. The poem itself, the contents, beautiful. But they are, the way they are using it, the way you chant it, the way you sing it. Understand? So we have to, they should not encourage these things. And we give it Islam, you know, Islamic nasheed. So everything now is Islamic. Islamic nasheed, Islamic movies, Islamic acting, Islamic Islam. Afi, <coughs> don't please for the sake of Allah. Don't attribute these things to Islam. Because they have nothing to do with Islam. They have nothing to do with Islam. Is this clear to you? Barakallah. Uh, my sister has been divorced uh, three times, talaq uh, shari, with the uh, inter periods between. Uh, can she go back to her husband in any way? See, these issues, the issues of talaq, should go to the qadi. You should go to the qadi, the judge, and he should listen to all the cases and the situations. How was the first talaq? Was it really valid or not, and the second one, and the third one. If all the talaqs were valid, and the man when he made the talaq, he was, you know, aware of what he said, because if a man says talaq when he was angry, Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, he has one volume of his fatawa on the talaq. He mentioned in that. He said there are three levels of anger. Three levels of anger. The first level, a person becomes mad, black out. You know, some people like that. When he's angry, he doesn't see finish. So he will be talking, but he doesn't know what he's saying. So he said if a person reached that level and he made the palag, the palag is invalid. Because he's just like insane, mad. Second level of anger, he said, he can recall, he can remember what he said, but he couldn't stop it. So some people, we've seen people like that. When they are angry, they are shivering. You know this? Have you seen that? Like that. Very angry. And his wife is challenging him. He's telling him, are you a man? I don't want to live with you. Let me go. If he says that, say, no, I'm not a man. I'm not going to divorce you, by the way. So he said, if he reached that level, he's so angry. And he couldn't hold the words. He couldn't stop it. He said, also, that palag is invalid. The third level of anger, he said, it's no man anger. No husband will divorce his wife while he's, you know, sipping tea with her, you know? Darling, you are part <laughs> Any husband will do that? No. Always, Talat happens when people are angry, true or not. Maybe something silly, and some, most of the Talat for silly reasons. When you ask him, why did you divorce your wife? She I cannot tell you. Because it is so silly. So it depends. So that's why you have to take your case to the Qadi who will ask you this detailed questions, ask you detailed questions, and ask you for more information. If all the three cases of Palau, 
The first one was valid. Kaudi said it is valid. The second one, the same. The third one is... The, that's the end of it. If he said, no, this one cannot be counted. This talaq is invalid. So here, then it will be only counted as as two. So that's why, my dear brothers, try to remove this word talaq from your mind. Wipe it away. Not for the silliest reason for anything. The word talaq comes on your tongue. Because now the rate of talaq among the Muslims it's so alarming. You know this. And also the rate of khula. A sister, every sister, I want khula. I want khula. I want khula. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ said, those who ask for khula for anything, no reason, they are hypocrites. Munafiqat. And another hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, any woman who asks for talaq with no valid reason, justified reason, she cannot smell the fragrance of the Jannah. Al Jannah to Haram Ali. So both the brothers and the sisters, they should be matured enough. Not for any problem, they just, the only thing they think of is the talaq. Life is not milk and honey. Life is a lot of tests, obstacles, hardships. You know this. <coughs> Even the house of the Prophet Sallallahu he had problems with his wives. All of them, they got together, the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, we want maintenance. Give us. He said, I don't have. So he got angry with them and he left them. And he said, you will not see me for one month. And he stayed in the masjid for one month. Sleeping in the masjid, not in his houses. And the rumors went all over Medina. The Prophet divorced his wives. The Prophet divorced his wife. Omar came. He found his daughter Hafsa crying. He said, he divorced you? He said, I don't know. He said, how many times I told you, don't listen to Aisha. You're listening to her. See what happened to you. Aisha can say anything to the Prophet because he loves her. Aisha's father is better than your father. He said that to his daughter. Then he went to the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ was in the room in the masjid and Bilal at the door. He said, ask the Prophet ﷺ that I want to see him. He went inside, he came, he said, three times. After the third time, he started walking back. Now Umar, he entered, he looked. He didn't see anything in the room. Prophet ﷺ sleeping on the ground. <coughs> now the Omar of the Allah he wants to know to diffuse the tension. He said, you know, Prophet of Allah, when we were in Mecca, the women could not raise their, uh, their eyes up. The women in Mecca, when we were in Mecca, no woman would shout at her husband. But when we came to Medina, our women start learning from the women of the Ansar because the Ansar is so sweet, so nice. So they started to argue with us, to shout with us. The Prophet ﷺ started to smile. I must sit down. See? So first of all, Umar wants to make an atmosphere suitable because he wanted to find out. So now the Prophet ﷺ is relaxed, he's smiling. Umar said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, did you divorce your wives? <laughs> <laughs> and the Prophet said, No, I didn't. Umar came shouting. The message is full of the Sahaba, and Umar is shouting. The Prophet did not divorce his wives. After one month, the Prophet went back to his wife. And the first one he started with was Aisha. After 29 days, Aisha said, I was counting the days and the nights with my fingers. After 29 days, the Prophet came. Aisha stood at the door. Another day. 
who I are in a hurry. He said, one month, right? Imagine this happens to you. He is telling the Prophet, another day you should wait, because he said one month. The Prophet said, Aisha, the month can be 30 days and 29 days. <laughs> can we have peace? Peace. Huh? <coughs> can be 30 days and can be 29 days. Imagine this happens to you, and you tell your sweetheart, your wife, you will not see my face for one month. After 29 days, it went back. He said, another day. What will you do? Hmm? You'll go for another month? So this happened in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu And one day, uh, Safiya sent food for the Prophet Sallallahu On the day of Aisha, when the Prophet Sallallahu was with Aisha. Aisha took a stone, hit the blade, broke the blade, the food fell on the ground. On the floor. The Prophet didn't do anything. Collected the food, put it in another plate, gave it to the Sahaba. Said, Eat, your mother felt jealous. Nothing more than that. So this was happening in the house of the Prophet. <laughs> Umar ibn Khattab, you know Umar, if Umar is walking in this uh, street, this road, the shaitan will take another way. And yet, one of the Sahaba, came to complain about his wife to Umar. When he reached the door of Umar's house, he heard the Umar's wife screaming at Umar, shouting. Ah, ah, ah. I'm not alone. It is in every house it is coming. Alhamdulillah. This is Umar's house, his wife is shouting. Alhamdulillah, what a relief. Then he decided to go back. Umar opened the door. Say, brother, come. What is it? No, 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 nothing. No, no, please come. He said, you know, Amir Mumineen, I have problems with my wife. And when I reach your house, I heard her flaring at me. You know? Umar said, you know, Akhi, he said, see Umar what he said. He said, you know, she cooks for me. She takes care of my children. She stitches my clothes. She looks after my horse. And he started listing all the things that he's doing. If from time to time she flares up, I have to take it. I have to overlook it. That's what life is. So unless we know that life is not something ideal, no. The reality is something. It's not that what you read in the novels, no. Headache, believe me, marital life is a headache. <laughs> yes, it is a headache. And the second wife is more headache. And the third, more headache. It's not fun, I'm telling you. It's not. This child wants this, the child, and this, and this. Then soon you start scratching your head and you don't know what to do. So that is the reality, that's what life is. So not for the minimum thing, silly reasons. I cannot live with you. What is this? Many sisters, they send me emails or on the, on the, on the palto. Sheikh, I can't cope with him. I can't stand him. If your wife says, I can't stand you, kiss her, hug her, tell her I love you. If he tells you, divorce me, tell her I love you. That means when she says, give me tala, divorce me, it means love me more. Sisters, right? <laughs> yeah, love me more. That's what she needs. Because if the moment you say you are tired, she will start, you know, crying. That's wonderful. She wants you to take care of her. And sometimes she doesn't mean it when she says something. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't give them the power to have the talaq in their hand. Imagine that the women, they have it in their hand. Imagine that. First day. 
Talik, talik, talik. Oh. Yes. But the man, he will start calculating what will happen to the case, what will, what will happen with the custody, what will... He calculates all these things in his mind. Then he will say, okay, I have to be patient. I have to take it for the sake of the case. Because he thinks rational and he thinks emotional. Okay, is this clear to you? So, the talaq, we don't encourage it, inshallah. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. What do you think regarding the uh, zikr? Like you say, obviously, uh, praying like we do salah, we read Quran, which is zikr, and it's sunnah, zikr by the Prophet. Yeah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what's your view regarding those people who sit in gatherings and they do circle zikrs or they move their head, they do sniffing zikr, that uh, forms of uh, worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? <coughs> Even within them, uh, to become a Sufi, you get the, uh, at the Bradford University, there was a, a recent. Uh, gathering there, and obviously, uh, non Muslims are welcome to come in there to remember their God and come in circles and lose zikrs and these type of uh, worship acts. What do you think regarding these things? What category does it come in? Well, this is not the, 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 the proper way of making the. It's not what the Quran taught us, it's not the what the Prophet taught us. That the dhikr, first of all, it is done individually, you by yourself. Number two, by contemplation, you reflect on what you are saying. See, subhanAllah. Believe me, it comes from the side. Feel the, the sweetness. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. And you reflect upon this tasabi and dhikr. That way you have this khushu and iman and the peace inside you. And you're making the tasbih and the salah after the salah. SubhanAllah. Have you seen the Muslims in the Salah, what they do after the Salah? Have you seen them? Have you seen them? That's what that's me. And their lips, SubhanAllah, sip, 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 That is SubhanAllah, sip, 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 sip. That is SubhanAllah, quickly, SubhanAllah. It's not that the dhikr, it's not that it's me. So you have to do it, articulate it, understand what you are saying, do it individually, not collectively, not loudly. You don't disturb the people around you. Somebody is reading the Quran, someone, don't disturb them. Imam Darimi, he reported through an authentic Islam that he said in Iraq, Abdullah, uh, Abu Musa al he entered one of the Messiah. And he saw a circle, Sheikh sitting, and there's a pile of pebbles, stones, and then the Sheikh would say, say SubhanAllah 100 times. So everyone would take pebbles 100 times, 100, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Are you following? Then Alhamdulillah 100 times, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ar, you saw that? This is very strange. We didn't do that. The Prophet didn't did teach us this way. So he went and he asked Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He said, I saw in the masjid something. And I want you to see it. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he went and he covered his face. And immediately when he saw them, he said, How quickly you perish, O Omar of Muhammad. How quickly you perish. He didn't say, Jazakumullah khair, you are doing wonderful work, good. He said, how quickly you perish, O oh, followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa O Ummat Muhammad. The clothes of your prophet are still in good condition. His utensils are still intact. His companions are among you. By Allah, your eyes have found a way better than the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Oh, you are opening the door of misguidance. One of the two. You choose. Have you found a way better than the way of the Prophet 
Oh, you are opening the door of Balala, misguidance. He said, you know, father of Abdurrahman, our intention is good. We want something good. We, th we thought it's okay. He said, no, there's no good except what the Prophet taught us. If someone comes to you and says, brother, do this. It is good. Tell him, I will not do it. But it is good. Who told you it is good? Ask him, did this good you want me to do? Did the Prophet ﷺ know about it? Did he know it? This khair, this good, did the Prophet ﷺ know it? Yes. Second question, did he teach it to his companions? Yes, where? If the answer no, he didn't know it. So the Prophet didn't know this khair, and you knew it? So who told you? Are you following? Who told you? When the Prophet was not aware of it. If he said he knew it, did he teach it? No. So who taught you when the Prophet didn't teach the companions? So where did he get this from? So the khair is only by following the footsteps of the, of the Prophet What he did we do, what he left we leave. And the sunnah of the Prophet there are four types. His sayings, his actions, his approvals, and the things that he did not do. The things that he didn't do is also sunnah. For instance, he did not make adhan for Eid. He did not make adhan for the eclipse prayer. So if one now wants to make adhan for the Eid, it becomes what? Bid'ah. Because the sunnah not to make adhan for the Eid. The Prophet ﷺ left the adhan, so the sunnah also to leave the so what the Prophet did is Sunnah and what the Prophet left also and didn't do is also Sunnah. Is this clear? As you like. <laughs> uh, one final question because uh, it's a serious one. Is uh, There's a mother here and her children uh, swear at her and treat her badly. Uh, what advice do you have for her? Yeah, there is one mother here. Her children swear at her and treat her badly. They swear they abuse her. Abuse her. Yeah, verbally abuse her. See, my advice for this mother is it's very hurtful, no doubt. But mother is a mother. No matter what you do to her, she is still you are part of her. You are part of your mother. She will not hate you. It will pain her. But I'm telling the children, whatever you do to your mother, your children will do it to you. By Allah. Whatever you do to your parents, your children will do it to you. There are many stories happen. The old people, they told us. Exactly. So the children should fear Allah, repent, turn to Allah, and ask forgiveness. Ask the mother to forgive them. And I tell the mother, strengthen your relationship with Allah. Get closer to Allah. And pray to Allah to guide your children. And I will pray for your children. May Allah guide them. May Allah make them beautiful to you and obedient to you. Amen. Children, listen to your parents, listen to your mothers. The Jannah at the feet of the mothers. The Jannah at the feet of your mothers. And Hassan al Basri, one day, he came late to the study circle and he told his students, You know why I'm late? I was in the Jannah. I was kissing the feet of my mother. Yes. Your mother who carried you nine months in her womb. Nine months. You were inside. She gives you everything. And she was happy. You kick her, she smiles. Mashallah, mashallah. Huh? See? He's moving. Can you 
touch him? Can you feel him? Mother is happy. That's your mother. You came out. You don't know. You can't imagine what she went through. The labor. Women, they know that. Contractions. That's why the Prophet said, if a woman dies in the labor, he's Jaida. He's a martyr. The man who carried his mother on his back from Sana'a in Yemen to Mecca. And he performed the tawaf. And then he came to one of the Sahaba and said, what do you think now? I think I did everything. Huh? You know, I carried her from Yemen to Umrah and all that. The Sahabi said, can your mother walk? He said, yes. He said, let her walk. All this is not equal to one of the contractions of labor. All of this, what you did. Your mother, you cannot reward your mother. May Allah reward our mothers. May Allah grant them the Jannah. And may Allah make us all beautiful to them. So if you have your mother alive or your father, these are the door to the Jannah. Be beautiful and kind to them. And the pious woman, the righteous woman, is the one who will tell her husband, take care of your father, take care of your mother. She's the one who will tell you, I love you. And because I love you, I don't want you to end in Jahannam. So take care of your father, take care of your mother. And she will love them and take care of them. And believe me, my sister, if you take care of your in-laws later on also, when your children get married, their wives also will take care of you. So I tell this mother to be half supper, get closer to Allah, get up at night every night, shed tears, pray to Allah, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide your children and Allah is able to do that. Amen. Amen. Barakallahu feekum for your patience and attendance. Insha'Allah, we'll see you soon. Insha'Allah. <laughs> تضيناها شعارا في الحياه ورباه